Hey guys, so in this video here, what we're going to be running through is the Victron family of products. And I'll show you in an off-grid situation of most of the products that you would use or choose to use and the difference between them. Now, this here, this video it will change all the time, so there's maybe something to come back to when Victron leases new products and things like that. I will keep it updated. Now, the way I like to start and I think about things and the way I always design my systems, I start from the roof and I come down. So, now with the Victron gear, we come down to the MPPTs or the solar chargers. Now, there's two different types of MPPTs and it really depends whereabouts in the world that you are and what you can use. Now, in Australia, as an example, we're not allowed to use all these MPPTs. We have to use a lot of the higher ones when we're installing for customers or doing things like that because they have to have an earth fault alarm built into them. And it all really depends whereabouts you are in the world or what voltages you're allowed to play with and things like that. So just take into consideration what you can and can't do in your country with these Victron products. So you'll see these new big square ones, they're the ones that are building with the earth fault alarms and they can take the higher voltages. Pretty much a rule of thumb, the higher the voltages get, the less they want people DIY playing around with them. And these ones have that earth fault alarm in them. Now, if you wanna use any of these other products here in Australia, now, I'm based in Australia, and a lot of people that be doing these courses are based in Australia as well. You just require an earth fault alarm. So in Australia, this is actually an Australian made product by Ariel. And this is actually one really good thing about it. It actually just doesn't protect your MPPTs or show there's a fault on the roof. It actually protects your whole system. So if there is an earth fault, to say, for example, a rat or a mice or something's chewed on a bit of cable or something's been nicked and the RCD just didn't quite trip, this earth guard will let you know about that. So it protects the whole system. So anything that goes to ground, lets you protect it. So really good investment. They're worth about $600, I think, here in Australia. And, you know, as an example in Australia here, if you want to use these 250 slash 60 or 70 MPPTs, you'd require to put an earth fault alarm in there to be able to use it and comply with the Australian rules and regulations. But, you know, if you're in the States or the UK, uh, I think the UK might have a similar rule, but the States don't. You can just whack them up and you're fine. You don't need to worry about the earth fault alarm. Now, the next thing we'll talk about is Victron's all-in-one units. Now, with these all-in-one units, so they actually take solar and they're an inverter charger all-in-one. So you can actually whack your solar panel straight into them and you whack your generator into them and it'll actually charge your battery. So they're an all-in-one unit. A lot of the new products are under these more the multi-RSs uh, and the smart solars. So if you think about this from a programming point of view, these products you tend to use the Victron Connect app and you connect them through the Victron Connect app to do anything locally. The Victron Connect app actually has a lot more features and functionality than VRM locally. So you can do a lot more with that there. But from a remote point of view, programming and doing things, you can still use the Victron Connect app remotely and do it all from your phone or from your desktop. I actually use it on my desktop, Victron Connect. It doesn't have all the features and functionality as VRM does. And as time goes on, I know Victron are really focused on making these products. You can do everything from an app on your phone and you don't really require to log into the VE config, which is great. And these products here, you can config everything from the Victron Connect app. You actually don't need the VE config files and to be able to log in with a laptop. Now we'll jump over the inverter chargers. Now, very rarely, I'm not going to talk about inverters in this situation here. I personally don't recommend inverters. For the money and the cost of the extra couple of hundred dollars, I'd highly recommend using an inverter charger. You have so much more usability from the device, so much more from your generator. I'll just really explain the difference here so you understand. So if you just buy an inverter and then a separate charger, all that charger is going to do is charge the batteries. That's it. So if you've got your generator there charging away, it's just going to charge your batteries. If you're using an inverter charger, what actually happens is the way the vent generator sends the power through the Victron, it'll power the loads first and then in any extra, it can go back and it'll use the extra from the generator to charge the batteries. So you get the full use of the generator and I highly recommend always use an inverter charger. They're a lot better device. Now, anything here with the inverter charger that says a GX, that actually comes in and they're more their low cost, low end. And the way I sort of think about it is most of the devices have a GX device built in. You don't need a Cerbro or any of the monitoring, which we'll get into a little bit later in this video. It all comes as a part of the device. I'm really not a big fan of these GX devices. I've done very few of them in my lifetime. Uh, I prefer to do all the individual components. And that's not saying one of my favorite new products is this new RS Solar. I think it's a really good product. It's an all-in-one unit and actually just serves a really good purpose. 
a lot of the easy solders with the newer easy solders compared to the older ones they're not as good as actually all the separate components and i prefer once these new easy solder 2s come out i prefer to use multiple devices now one of the easiest ways to think about it if you see on the front all the orange stripes then you see a green stripe the green stripe basically means it takes a solar input so it's one of the easiest way to think about and understand it if you look at any of these devices and it's got a green stripe on the front you know you can put solar panels in it when it comes to the easy solar products and the multi pluses the rs's don't have that green stripe in there so they're an rs solar which means that they can take a solar input now within the inverter charger range what you're going to have the difference between you have multi pluses and multi plus twos we'll talk about that first so a multi plus is more designed to use an off-grid situation the biggest difference is inside them they have two relays the multi plus one only has one relay and the multi plus two has two relays so if you're doing a hybrid or grid connected system in australia it's law to use the multi plus two because there's a dual relay in there so if the grid fails there's two contactors in there for protection so that the system can't back feed to the grid and protection for people working on the network so if you are going to connect to a, to a grid connected system you can use the multi plus twos and i know a lot of companies these days are just designing and using the multi plus twos there's just so much usability when it comes to that hybrid ESS sort of system. And just an example, like literally, if you brought a really good system and you were off grid, no grid available, and you had a multi plus two in it, and you wanted to move and take your system with you, a lot of the systems we do these days in boxes, you could pick it up, take it with you. And if you've got the multi plus two and you brought a house with a grid, you can just connect it straight in. With a multi plus one, you'd require to buy some anti oiling devices. So if you went with this here, there's a bit more infrastructure you require to buy and when you look at the two it just doesn't really make sense personally honestly i went with the multi plus one and i spent the money and i got the external relay i think the multi plus ones are a better quality product the way they're built they're heavier the way i always judge most of this stuff with electronics is the heavier it is if it's the same specs and one's heavier than the other one's going to have more copper in it which is basically going to mean it's going to work better last longer so that's just how i think about it now that's the difference between the multi plus and the multi plus twos and what we also have is a quattro and a multi plus and in the quattro range you have a quattro one and a quattro two yes as you can see here the difference between the quattro and the multi plus it's pretty simple in the multi pluses they have one input so you can stick one generator into them and in the quattro it'll have two inputs so you can have two generators or what they're mainly used for victron come from a boating world and think about it like this you can have a generator input to charge your batteries and then when you pull up you have your shore power you can plug in so you get two inputs there in an off-grid situation the way we like to use them is i like to use them that you've got two backup generators some customers have a little small generator you can use that for a backup and then also a big generator now victron have changed a lot of things with the programming and things like that these days where you can sort of as an end user you don't need the config files you can use the screen to change the input for the generator so the reason we use them back in the day is really pretty irrelevant these days because you can, if you did have a big generator, you could actually have it rewired to a smaller one if something failed in your bigger one and you could actually just go in on your screen and adjust your generator input so you don't overload your generator. Now, like I said, the MultiPlus has one input, Quattro has two inputs. Both systems have two outputs. Now, what those two outputs are, think about it like this. With the programming and technology these days, you can actually have both outputs on all the, all the time. If you think about it like this though, output one is for your main loads, your lights, your TVs, your fridges, all that sort of stuff. Anything big that you really only want to run, so as a, I'll use hot water as an example, you can have on the output two that it only runs, as an example, so you, you're dealing with a 48 volt battery system, you're dealing with pylon tech, and the batteries get to 51 volts, you can actually have it when the batteries are above 51 volts, AC output two turns on. So when the batteries are almost full, it's gonna turn on and start heating your hot water. So it'll just send power directly to that load. You might wanna use a pull pump. So literally as soon as the volts get to a certain height, they turn on. And the same thing as well, you can actually have it set that when they drop below 51 volts, you know, you might go down to 50 volts or something like that, it'll actually turn off. So it's ideally to use when your batteries are getting full in an off-grid situation, you can turn it on. In a grid-connected situation, the way I've used it in my house, I have my oven and my induction cooktop wired to output two. And so what happens when the grid fails, my oven induction cooktop will turn off. So if I am cooking in the middle of something and the grid fails in my house, I have a hybrid house, my oven and induction cooktop will turn off. That makes me aware 
that we've had a grid failure and that I've got to be careful what I'm using. So then my batteries only run my lights, TVs and fridges. So there's lots of other options you can use and do with that output too that you can do. But that just sort of gives you the real basic difference between a Quattro and a MultiPlus. So a Quattro has two inputs, two outputs, and a MultiPlus has one input, two outputs. So something to think about. Now the next thing to consider in your system is a battery monitor. Now depending, if you're using a Pylon Tech battery, this is not necessary, you actually don't need them. One of the reasons I like to use battery monitors regardless is because it keeps the battery manufacturers honest. If you've got a shunt in your battery system, you've got a third party monitoring. I've had issues over the years with companies saying, no, 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 our data's reading this. And as an example, in my house, I have five or six different monitoring platforms in my house for my solar PV, and not one of them reads the same. So something to think about there. <laughs> um, I use this as a really cheap insurance or a couple of hundred dollars to put in there. You've got the options with the ones that actually work with the distribution bars if you're gonna be using those, or you've got the smart chance. Pretty much these days, the, the screens are irrelevant in an off-grid situation, because if you've got a servo in there or any sort of monitoring device, all the information that's showed from these will show up on that screen. So I really don't use these here at all. I would either use the shunt, the VE CAN link shunt, or a smart shunt. Have them in your system. It just gives you a bit of insurance. So if you do have Pylon Tech as an example, Pylon Tech will always read the battery information from the Pylon Tech itself. And if you've got a Victron battery monitor in there, it's gonna give you a bit of protection. You've got a third party monitoring device in there. If anything does happen, you've got that extra device in there for your protection. So I'd highly recommend using one of these battery monitors in a system design. Now, as you can see, these are the DC distributions. What these are really good for, there's a few of these products here, depending on whereabouts in the world you are, of what you can and can't use. Now, in Australia, it's highly recommend to fuse all your batteries if you parallel them. So the Lynx distributor is great for this here because every single input has a fuse and they actually don't come with a fuse. So it's something to think about and remember, if you are ordering these, you do require to order the fuses separate because the fuses will be different for 24 volt, 48 volt and 12 volt, depending on your system design that you're doing. And also the Victron fuses are very, very expensive. I'd recommend looking to automotive locations. A lot of automotives have the same MIDI fuses that you can get and they're a lot more cost effective than using the Victron ones. Just be careful when buying from automotive areas, they are voltage specific. So it is important if you are doing a 48 volt system, buy a 48 volt or a 24 or a 12. Now that's what's great about the Lynx distributor. Where the Lynx power in, it's exactly the same device, it just doesn't have the smarts in it. It doesn't have the fuses and it doesn't have the information where with a Lynx distributor, it can actually tell you on your Victron which battery blow fuse is blown. So if there is a battery not working, you can actually get notified on your color control or edit email notification through Victron remote monitoring platform. So something to think about and consider. You've also got your BMS and your shunts in there. So I personally, I like to use the distributors with the shunt as my battery monitors, my external system in there, whack them together. They fit in nice and neat. And from an installation point of view, it makes your life really easy. These distributors are good for about four batteries. So if you did want to monitor every single battery individually, and use fuses, you can only put four in there. And every time you wanna add more and more batteries, you require another distribution bar. With the Lynx power in, they are the same. You can fit four in there. You can squeeze a fifth one in there. There is a spare nut and bolt in there, or you can lay them up if you're not fusing your batteries. But probably highly recommend, if your batteries are not individually protected back at the battery, I'd highly recommend use the Lynx distributor and put in the individual fuses. Now with the panels and monitoring system, Victron have a few different devices. So with the Victron monitoring devices and how it works, so the VRM is an online portal and highly recommend for yourself or any customers get everything online because all that data is transmitted online. Inside the devices, which we go into another video, you can change your data that's uploaded every one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, all your intervals. I like to push it down to really granular so every minute we actually record that data so we can see what's really going on on a granular level. Sometimes having it 15 minutes or 20 minutes, you really can't see what's going on when you're troubleshooting and looking to find out a problem. If it's 15 minute data, sometimes you just miss it and you can't find the error. Where with one minute data, you can see a lot more that's happened. Now the Victron Connect is more an app to deal with things locally. And with all the updates recently, you can use the Victron Connect app to program things remotely. Depending on the product and the device, a lot of the MPPTs or the new RS450s, you can actually log into the Victron Connect app remotely and you can go in and reprogram that system and make any changes required. 
Now there's global links. If you're in an area of the global link that doesn't have any internet and you don't want to spend the money on Wi-Fi, you can actually buy these global link 520s. The data is not as good, it's not as granular, but literally you can put all the information on the internet and it comes with a prepaid SIM card. We talked about the smart shunts in the battery monitoring. Now jump down over here. Now the Ekrano, if that's how you pronounce it, um, what it actually means, it's a Latin word that basically means screen for a computer. So it's basically the computer and the screen all in one. This is one of Victron's newest devices that's come out in the marketplace. Now the GX Touch 50 and 70, it's just a high definition touch screen. Now with these, if you want to extend them, I've had some success over the years of extending them about 10 meters, where I've actually got an extension cable for the USB and I've got a power extension cable for the HDMI cable, which has allowed me to put my screen about 10 meters away from where the device is. Now, I'd highly recommend put get all systems that you're doing online on the internet. There's so much more usability as an end user with the Victron VRM account and put these screens in. They just make life so much easier to view and what's going on. Now, the different devices, you've got your Cerbro GX, so Cerbro meaning the brains of the system. I'm a really big fan of these Cerbros, and this is what we've mainly used for the last few years. They've had a very low failure rate when you compare to these color screens. So these were the color screens, which was all in one. So it was the brains in the back and they were limited and they are limited. So check it out. These are really good for if you get a simple system, one MPPT, maybe a PV inverter charger, one inverter. It's just a basic system. We have used these in some really big commercial systems. They do have a lot of VE direct inputs in the back, but just double check the specifications of designing a system of how many inputs. I would say these are more limited. Where with the Cerbro, you can do a lot more with the Cerbro. What's really good about the Cerbro is you've got a lot more features. Say if you want to monitor your diesel generator tank online, you can see how much fuel's in your generator. You will actually require one of these tank senders though from Victron to get the information over onto it. So something to think about. Now the Venuses, sort of the history of the Victron devices. It used to be the color control. Then these Venuses device come out. I really haven't used and designed these in an off-grid situation for a very long time. They're probably more designed for boats, motorhomes, caravans, and things like that. So if you're in that area, you might get a lot more usability and function out of the GX device. I just prefer using the Cerberos. They're better, a lot needed to work with. But pretty much from a software point of view, both devices are the same. So if you are going to use the Cerbro GX and you want a screen, you're going to have to buy these two here. And something to think about and consider and remember, on these Cerbro devices, You've actually got three USB inputs and one of them is specifically for power for the GX Touch. You can't use it for communication, so you can't use it to put a USB to RS-485 in all three USBs. You can only use it for one, something to think about and consider when you're designing the system. Most of these systems where you have issues is where you're going big and you're doing lots of regulators, lots of solar charge controllers. That's where you want to spend some bit more time and think about which device is going to be better for your situation. Depending if you're designing a big system or not, most of these will do most small systems. We've done some pretty big systems. and We've done up to 100 kilowatt solar systems off grid using the Cerberos and the GXs. Depends on how many devices you're putting in there. If you're going to do a really big system and you might need a lot more inputs, you've got the Octo GX down here, which has a lot more inputs and a lot more usability and things like that. So they're mainly the main products you're going to use in an off grid situation from the design point of view. And the one other product that we've actually been looking at and considering, we've had a few customers put these in an off-grid situation, is a Victron EV charger. I've used one in my house and tested out. In an off-grid situation, if you are going to go Victron and everything, what these are really suitable for is it gives you the real ability to make sure that you're only charging from your PV and you're never taken from your batteries. So ideally, when you're living off-grid, your EV is only ever getting charged from solar, never from your batteries, and you can manually override it if you want to go, hey, look, no, I need to charge from batteries or charge from the generator and things like that. You've got some fun smarts in there that you can do that you can make sure it doesn't charge from your batteries. If you do want to charge your car, turn the generator on and certain things like that. So if you are going to do a whole full off-grid system design with an EV charge, I'd probably recommend go down the path of the Victron products. Now that covers most of the products you're going to use in an off-grid situation when you're designing a system. Victron has a range of everything. That's one really good thing about Victron is you can get everything from that one manufacturer. Now, just as an example here in Australia, we don't really, we don't, we never use the Victron solar panels or really the solar batteries because they are really expensive for what they are. 
in Australia, we get rebates on panels if qualified installers install them. And they're at the point these days that sometimes it's actually not worth it. If you are a qualified installer watching this, yeah, the Victron panels are a waste of time. You can't claim the STCs on it. And same with the batteries. The Victron batteries are a really good quality battery. I'll give them that. And they're designed to be put in a caravan or a motorhome, taken bush and flogged, you know. So if you are going to use them in a home situation or put on a boat, you're probably paying for something that you're really not going to benefit out of all the vibrations and things like that. We're in a house situation you're not really going to need. So for us designing the systems, we never look at the Victron batteries and we never look at the Victron solar panels for that off-grid system design. There's a lot more better solutions available on the market than using the Victron products and you're paying a lot less because they're not designed to sit in a caravan and go over a corrugated road. Cool, so that's it there for all the Victron products I'd highly recommend using in your off-grid design.